Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Toby Height joining us here, our esthetician, Reiki practitioner as well. Third Eye Candy is the name of the company, and I'm excited to have my friend back here from Choctaw, Oklahoma. I got to learn all about where she lives uh, on our last session. I'm excited to have her back here to talk more about uh, the work she does with her energy readings, her emotion coding, and, and so much more. Hello. Welcome back. How hello, are you? Hello. I'm excited to be back. I'm good. I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Excited that, you know, it's like summer is coming to an end. The Labor Day weekend is next weekend. Yeah. It's coming what upon us. Doing? I'm excited. Well, kids go back to school the following week, so I'm really excited. <laughs> I bet, yes yes uh so other than that it's been a good summer but i can't wait to get back in the swing of things and feel a little better because it's less stressful when the kids are in school what about you yeah. what do you have planned for the big weekend anything good <sighs> okay so <clears throat> i'm going out of town this week so oh, are you going to like rhode island or mm -hmm. yes so I'm in the stressing out stages. Do you stress out before you go on a trip? Like when it's time to pack and get everything and your schedule gets busy? Thank you. I'm so glad you said that because the guys don't understand this. No. I get anxiety. I have to pack everything. My suitcase is always overweight. I have to bring two suitcases. I'm always... And then the one time I didn't bring a suitcase last year with my kids to Nashville, the second one, guess what? Ended up at the TJ Maxx near the Grand Ole Opry buying a suitcase to take home because I just feel like I'd rather have more than less. But it's a right. problem. It gives me stress and anxiety. And then I come home and then I never even have time to unpack it. And that's another anxiety. What are, me too. Tell me, tell me, tell me about you're packing. Go ahead. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the last couple years that I go on trips, I like to plan my outfits like before I pack because then when I'm on my trip, I don't have to worry about coordinating. It's like I already have my outfits already planned out. But while I'm like doing the organizing and the packing and the laundry, I'm like <sighs> stressed out. I don't know what about laundry in general gives me anxiety. It does. How do you do it with like three people. I know. It's hard. It's hard. Every like right now this morning, I remember I came out of the, the, uh, the, the, I was going to call it the washing machine, the, the dishwasher, uh, the dryer, and everything's up on the landing in my house, and I just had to leave it there because I had to start work. But there's piles. What happens is, in my case, there's piles on, like, the kid's bed, piles on the floor, piles in my room. I never get to. It's like, Thanks. So, yeah. Piles. You yeah. know what one of my friends told me? She was like, well, they have people who can do your laundry and then they bring it to you all folded up and all you have to do is put it away. I'm like, the only part I'm not good at is putting it away. Exactly. Exactly. For. Yes. And I'm like, I don't want to waste that money. I could do it. But then the problem is making the time to hang everything. And then I don't even use a hamper. Some people are like, what? I'm like, no, I just pay, I put it in, take it out. Someone, you know, they, they get undressed at night to go to, into the shower. I take their clothes. It goes right. And I don't like hampers. They bother me and they take up space. But, uh, exactly. What do you do? Yeah. If I'm good, when I take it out of the dryer, I'll at least like lay it out in a pile. My mom's always on it. She's like, you don't want it to be wrinkly. And she's right. Once it's too wrinkly, I'm just going to put it back in the dirty clothes. You it's know? so true. I hate the wrinkles. <laughs> Uh, the the laundry, it's like you would think after 33 years of my life, I would have this under control, but no. And here I am a few days out from, you know, my trip and I'm just like freaking out about the freaking laundry again. And can, the I, outfit. can I ask about the trip? Are you going to see someone? Yeah. Is there a relationship yeah. or is it a friend? Is it work? What is it? So I'm dating a guy that lives in Rhode Island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's he's from here, Choctaw. We grew up together Aww. and his mom is a client of mine and she lives in my town just right down the street and I know all of his family and yeah. So and what part of Rhode Island is he in? The Newport area. Oh my gosh, that's right. Oh my goodness. Exciting. Oh, I am so excited. I've been looking forward to it. It's just today is packing day and so I'm just like. <laughs> now, have you been there before though? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so yeah, it's so gorgeous, especially this time of year. What a weekend. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, very excited. The one long distance dating, it's not something that I ever really wanted to get my signs self signed up for, you know? Uh, 
But here we are. So Well, he's from your hometown. Do you mind me asking what he does out there? Is it like he has to live out there forever and vice versa? Like what or could, well, could we commingle in the future? To. You know, he comes out here quite a bit, just as much as I go out there, you know, but um he has a son. And I think, okay, so I think his son lives in Boston because that's where we, that's where I met him. But his his son was saying that he lives in New Hampshire and I know all those states are close together. So yeah. he might live in New Hampshire and we just met in Boston, Got you know? It. Okay. If oh my goodness. Or something. But yeah, he's, he's never going to leave his son, of course. Yeah. And he has a diving uh, company where he... It's like a commercial diving company, and wow. he cleans boats and repairs boats, the sailboats. Wow. The sailboats are like thing there, I guess. And so, yeah, he does that. And then he's in a band. He's in a country band. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Exciting. A country yeah. band that we would know? Well, it's they do like local bars. and So cool. You know. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I love it. I love country music. We just went. Did I tell you I took all my kids to all? Oh, I have two. But then I have nie- two nieces, a nephew. Two neighbors, kids. I took them all to the Kenny Chesney concert last week. No, how was it? It's great. It's great. Great. Yeah, it was crazy to bring all the kids, but because I'm friends with Kenny, I can get free tickets. So I'm like, I didn't even ask. Wait, hang on. What? You say you're friends with Kenny? Yes. Yes. No way. Yes. Yes. So I, I mean, how blessed I get ten tickets to go to the show, and then the kids are like up front, like that Sam Pitt thing. But like my kids seven, and like it was crazy because it was good in the beginning when Megan. Maroney was on and uh, Zach Brown. Um, but then once, by the time Kenny came out, it was at nine o'clock and my poor son, his neck was killing him. And then the people were pushing and drinking. I'm like, hey, we got to go to our seats now. But it was an experience of a lifetime. My kid's first concert like that. And again, 10 tickets like that. I mean, so I'm very grateful. Yeah. He's a friend and I'm friends with a lot of his crew guys for over the years. It's been like probably like 15 years I've known. Oh my gosh. How did you guys meet? Met him, uh, interviewing him actually on on TV when I was an entertainment reporter back in the day at, this was Channel 11, our CW or um, how do I relate it to where you live? I guess it's a CW network, but it's a morning show here in in New York that I worked on and um, met him that day became friends with his crew. But then also, get this, uh, his another guy that works with him now used to be with Montgomery Gentry. So I'm friends with him, one of his road managers. I'm friends with uh, the guy in the food service department. Like, we just all became friends over the years. So I'm just thankful and lucky that they reached out and they even said, you're coming. And I'm like, no, I didn't even think about it this year. Sorry, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. Well, you should come. I'm like, okay, well, can I get 10 tickets? Yeah, I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah, but this time, I usually I go backstage and get to hang out, but this year with the chaos, I did not go backstage. I just, you know, I talked to, to Kenny before the show, just text him. That was it. You know, think about it. He's like a man with so many people and friends. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and I have too many children. I couldn't even do anything backstage, but she's usually fun. But yeah, I had a bigger responsibility this year than to go say hi to my friends. So I didn't even see my friends, but I went to the show this time and it was still, it was awesome. That's amazing. Yes. So I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how did you get into what you do? Oh, sure. You're so sweet. Um, I got into this because I needed um, money to pay for college, right? So what happened was my my family, middle-class family, my older sister, older brother never went to college. My parents didn't have the means. I worked since I was 12, bought my own car. Um, So it was always into work. And then I wanted to be a doctor. So I started going to the local uh, school here, uh, Stony Brook University, to become a doctor. But I also need another job now to pay my bills. So I got a job part-time working in promotions at a radio station. And then that led to me liking this fun, cool job in radio because, wow, now we're like, we're going to concerts and we have concerts and we're meeting like, you know, musicians and this is cool. This is fun. And then I'm like, maybe I should go into broadcasting. And then I switched majors, got into broadcasting, started working in television right away. And um, like, you know, four years later, and then always kept working in television. So I was lucky never to have to leave New York. Usually you, you to start in television, you got to leave into a smaller market. But I was very, very thankful um, and lucky. So that's kind of what happened. But looking back now, uh, at 46, I'm like, I wish I would have got my, my, my doctor degree. I wish I would be a doctor. But grass is always greener, right? I feel like right. I've had a really cool job and career and so much fun, but the longevity in that career isn't as good as like a doctor. Do you know what I'm saying? I, could, I would always have a job no, in this no. field. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this field, it's hard. You age out, you know, you don't want to look at a, you know, a 60 year old woman on TV. It's so men you can, but it's so true. So 
trying to find a job in television and radio is a hard, it's a hard thing. It's, you know, you're a dime a dozen. Everybody wants to work in your field because it's so cool and exciting. So they'll, they'll hire the, the newer, uh, cheaper, younger person because they can. And there's my lesson of the day. (laughs) I mean, you would definitely know more about your industry than me, certainly. But I used to feel that way about aesthetics, too, that like you age out of it. No one's going to want to come get skincare advice and services from someone who's, you know, older. No, look, no, my cat. (laughs) You know, and now I kind of I I don't know if that's true. And there's tons of even famous interviewers, you know, that are older, but older, but they're experienced and those are the people that you really want of course it's always fun seeing someone new and a fresh idea and a fresh you know Mm -hmm. look on things take on things but I don't really think people age out of their careers anymore but I see what you're saying I see what yeah yeah like um yeah women definitely do and it's like a underground not you know people talk about it but it happens the men are more you know respectable and you know with their gray hair with their wrinkles us women we're not, you know, so we have to upkeep and you got to look pretty and you got to, you know, start doing like um, Botox and like fillers and then you look actually weird and crazy. So, and then they don't yeah. like you like that. So then they get rid of you, I think, to be honest. But just women, I think in in general, people want to see a young, attractive, they don't want to see an old woman, but they'll want to see an old man. It doesn't make sense. But I think majority of people, I'm just saying. So it's a little bit of a well, biased discrimination. So I, by the time that you, if you ever get to the point where, you know, you feel like you're aged out, you're going to want to be retired anyway. So True. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. You're yeah. right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so what do you guys do for skincare and all that stuff out there? Because I've always been doing all the things. I started getting Botox when I was 21. Of course, I've always been obsessed with skincare, being an esthetician. What, what well, your, your forehead looks great. I didn't even know it was Botox. I got Botox like three months ago. It's coming out. But other than that, I, I started Botox like in my late 20s. But I get it like once every six months to a year. I don't even upkeep it. I know some people go every like, is it three months? Yeah. I, I don't because I, I don't want it. Yeah, it's fine. I feel like I feel like you don't have to do the most to stay on top of it. You know, you don't have. But it's called preventative aging, right? Because everyone says if you would have started at 20 and upkept it, that means you'd have no wrinkles, which I didn't do. So do you ever get wrinkles like when your Botox wears out on your forehead or no? That's why I started getting Botox at such a young age. Because I don't like, I didn't like having acne and wrinkles at the same time. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like I got to have one or the other. This is too much. So yeah, I mean, I do all the things I have. I go to a med spa and I get filler. I just try to keep it really minimal. Like where I've never, okay. I want to do, I wanted to try my lips. I want to get filler. I want to try, like I have smile lines, but I'm, I'm older than you, but I'm scared of the filler because it's more permanent. Where do you get it? Do you mind me asking? Um, okay. So I used to do my lips when that was like a trending thing when I was a little younger. Now I just like nasal labial folds and marionette lines. That's what I have. Wait, wait. They put them. Where do they put the needle? They just fill in these lines, the smile lines, you know. They're so bad. Okay. But my my guy said, oh, we can't put it there. You have to put it here to pull it up. And I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, my God. See though here? See? I, I, and then I Google it and I research it and some people do it. I'm like, I don't understand. That's kind of why I was wondering, like, do they do things differently out there? Like, you know, more advanced or because, yes, they say that you're supposed to like fill the cheekbones instead of lifting and before you do surgery and stuff like that. But we've been doing this and I only do it like once every 18 months or so, you know, so it's not like a ton and it metabolizes. It's hyaluronic acid based and it metabolizes. Which which one do you prefer? Just curious, because I'm going back to a different doctor soon. (laughs) Hey, honestly, I let her decide because she's a she's the injector, the professional. Yeah. She's gay, and so I don't know which one she uses. Got whether it. it's like some kind of Juvederm or Juvederm what, or Radius, I think it's called. Or okay, so I am. I was thinking about getting the Radius. Now that is a different one. That one can't be dissolved. Um, oh. And so I'm a, I feel like it's a little more not experimental, but you know they don't. They, it's just a newer one. They don't know as much about it. But she's wanting to do some Radius like in my neck. So. Like, I like the idea of that, but then I was looking it up and looking at the reviews, and I'm just like, oh, kind of scared. Oh, my gosh. You know? Well, I also had, like, a facial consultation from someone that, like, I interviewed here on one of these shows because she's she's a local Long Island gal. And I went to her, and um, she also suggested, let me turn to the side, to get chin filler, which I never did yet. But see, I have, like, a nubby chin. 
she said she can add and make it. And then you look online. I'm like, wow, I see what people do with filler in this area. I'm like, maybe I could do that. But that my chin doesn't really bother me as much as my wrinkles and like these things. But she said, mm -hmm. no, you can't put anything in here because, and I'm like, I, I want to put in here. I've Googled it. People put it in here. That's my problem spot. But everyone's different, I guess. I got to see someone else. But anyway, for the chin, for filler in the chin, which I don't have, just to tell you, and I she quoted me seven fifty. I don't know if that means anything to you. I don't know how much neck filler is for you, but it, when they quoted you, but prices, yeah. I don't know if they're fifty to do one syringe of the neck. I think yeah, six fifty, or they're running a special two for a thousand, two syringes for a thousand, or something. And what like about that. Botox? How many units do you get, and how much does it cost there? Just curious. Okay, so I actually get Dysport, which is very yes. similar to mm -hmm, Botox, I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's measured differently. It's like a smaller molecule, and yeah. it's a different price, and you need more units. So I'd say, usually I'll tell her my budget. I'll be like, listen, I have 300 bucks, so there you go. Give me a few you know? here, there, everywhere, yeah. Right, yeah. Because when and I was... We'll well, my, my friend who's a physician assistant, his, um, his wife is my best friend. For the first time ever, I let him inject me. He did great, and it was Botox. He gave us me a cost. It was $400 he yeah. did. But again, it depends how many. I have more wrinkles than you. I'm older. so. But he did that, and then I, when I used to go to somebody to pay for it, it would be like $750 for whatever I needed. So I don't know. Well, that's why I always give them a budget kind of because I feel like they're – I'm not saying that they don't know what they're talking about. They do. But if they can, they're going to treat you for every single issue that you have. And so they're always wanting to inject me with like $450 of Botox every three months. And sometimes I just feel like I don't really have to have that much, you mm -hmm. know? You know what I'm saying? Just like let's be on the conservative side. Just – not even necessarily for the budget aspect of it. I mean, that too, but also like, I just like to do things in small doses. You yep. know what I mean? Everything in moderation. I love it. And can I ask you another question since we're like friends? Um, yeah. Like, what does your boyfriend think about it? Because every guy that I date, I've never dated a guy who like accepted it. <gasps> what? You don't need anything done to your face. You don't need that. And like, they get nasty about it. And I'm like, um, because it makes me feel good with my forehead when, especially when I was on TV every day, the most annoying thing, if you watch TV in the news, you've got someone's forehead moving. So I wanted a frozen forehead. That's the look. And it makes me, and always, oh, you don't need that. Like putting me down, like I'm like a bad person. And then they think like you had so much work done. I'm like, is everyone's like, you had a nose job. I didn't have a nose job. I had a boob job. That was all I've done. I said, and my teeth are real. I'm like, but, um, you know, it makes me feel good. But all of the men in my life have always we're like, oh, and I'm like, yeah. I'm looking for a man that wants to like pay for it and like take care of me. And that's not right. happening. So <laughs> shut your mouth. I'm going to do what I want to do. But like, does your, who does your boyfriend say? Oh, I don't tell him. Oh, he doesn't. Okay. I, no, heck no. I don't. I mean, not that, not because I feel like I'm trying to hide it just because I don't want his opinion. You know, he doesn't know what women want and they're exactly what, like what you're saying. <laughs> Hey, that's so unnecessary and this and that. And then men are the same ones who want very youthful looking women. So it's like, I'll say I, you know, I have a facial appointment. He doesn't need to know the details. Yeah. That's no. So, well, I also. Whether he's paying for it or not, he doesn't need to know the details. I also Do I love this it? one. Yeah. When the guy says, oh, why are you wearing too much makeup? Well, you don't need that makeup. Uh, come with no makeup on. And I'm like, okay, ma'am walks into the bar and there's two twins at the bar. One girl has her makeup done. One is in her pajamas. Your eyes are going to go to the hot girl with the makeup on. I'm like, so why are you downplaying it? Oh, that's not true. That's not true. You really want me to come out without makeup? Like, I don't feel as good. But, like, that's another thing a lot of men talk about. Oh, why do you wear makeup? You don't need it. I know. And it's like, I get it. If we're at home or we're just running around and I don't have to be dolled up, fine. Yeah. I, I mean, great that you like that. But if we're going out, you know you want a girl who's in a dress and high heels and has her freaking mascara on. Exactly. So don't. Exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they don't know what they want. They're confused. I love it. It's so And true. any little, like, I don't want to say lie, but, you know... What did my therapist recently say? Vagueness or something? Yeah, vagueness. Be I'd be, I'm just vague. Good, good. Now, as an esthetician, what, what else do you recommend people to do, like, for their faces? What do you partake in? What do you um, – do you do laser treatments? Do you do facials? What, what is – Absolutely, but the number one rule that I hope everyone abides to is – 
SPF every single day on your face and neck and chest, okay? Because that alone, if you're not doing that, if you're not preventing aging, there's no reason in getting laser and retinol and facials because if you're not preventing it, you're you're doing yourself no justice like trying to age backwards, you know what yep. I mean? Mhm. Absolutely. So definitely sunscreen. Um tretinoin is amazing. Even what, in small doses. What percentage do you use? Because my doctor prescribed it and um, I had it and I peeled my face in the winter. It looked awesome, all, awesomely red. I haven't used it in a while. But then I went back to the doctor. I said, I need another script of that stuff, but I'm not going to use it because it's summer. But was it like 0.05%? Yes. No. Yeah. I and See, I only use my tretinoin once or twice a week at nighttime. Some oh. people use it every day and a doctor is certainly going to tell you use this every single day. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying that some people because of the peeling and the redness and the itchiness and the discomfort, they'll use it every day for 2 weeks and then they'll discontinue discontinue use altogether because it's so uncomfortable. They're like who wants to look like this, you know? Where if you use it just one or two nights a week, you still get the benefits but you don't get all the irritation. You Ooh. do get like a bit appealing, but just not as much. Does that make sense? Yeah. Tell me, where do you use it, by the way? Do you use it uh, under the eyes, the whole face, or where should, where do you I use do it? I do face, neck, and chest. Okay, good. So everywhere. Yeah. And do you yes. still, so twice a week, so do you still end up peeling in a few days, or? Not is usually. It- and if, even something else that you can do if you don't want to peel at all is you put your moisturizer on first, and then put your tretinoin or your retinols on oh. top. Didn't and that just that. helps protect it, especially people that are really sensitive, sensitive. to retinols. Yeah. Because not a lot of people, if it's, even if it's not peeling, it's still working. All it's doing is increasing your cell turnover. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's increasing your cell turnover. So you don't necessarily have to have the shedding and the peeling for it to be working. And eat, and if you want to avoid that completely, you just reel back on how often you use it. And you can also put moisturizer on first and then your retin- layer your retinol second. Can you put retinol like on your arm or leg or hand too to do the same type of exfoliate? Like I have some like discoloration on my legs. I'm like, I was wondering, would that help it? Yeah, definitely. Cool. They have retinols for your whole body. Really? Like potions and stuff that have, you know, low doses of retinols in them. Got it. I want high dose. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the good stuff, the strong stuff. Yeah, I'm with you. Cool. What else is part of the skincare regimen and routine? Miss Toby? Um, if you have uh, dark spots or hyperpigmentation, vitamin C is a big one. Look, here's my melasma coming out. Even though I have foundation on today, but it's from the sun, driving in the car, even with sunblock in the summer, the brown H spots start coming out and freckles. I think that happens with a lot of people. Yeah, 100%. So sunscreen there and then the vitamin C helps with that. Now, if you are the type of person that breaks out and has acne, vitamin C is not going to be your friend if you use it every single day. You can probably get away with using it sometimes, but if you have acne and you use vitamin C every day, it's going to flare up your acne. Got it. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Lasers. Have you ever done lasers? Always, because my girlfriend has a company called Permanent Touch Cosmetics. So, I'm thankful that uh, the laser company offers her like free laser tips for people who do like cross promoting. Like she does a lot of like the Real Housewives of New Jersey, uh, New York. So she always ha- always has like those people in. I'm like a local news person, right? So I get to come in and so um yeah, let's talk about the lasers. So she uh, Cyton is the laser company, right? Uh, that she uses, but again, everyone's different lasers. I've tried micro needling. I've tried um. The, the RF microneedling, but it really makes doesn't make my face as good as I'm trying to think. What is it called? Oh my gosh! Why can't I think? Give me a second. What type of lasers do you use while I look this up? Oh my gosh! I've done them all, and I can't remember the names. But there's like the Fraxel. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. The what's the recent one I did? BBL Moxie. Oh BBL, yes yep. BBL. I put the microneedling too mm-hmm. with the heat and the PRP, the plasma. Where they have you had that? Where they take out your blood and then spin the Never plasma? Never done that one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yep, I'm looking. BBL Hero Moxie. That's the one. That's the Moxie. one. Moxie. I've done the Moxie too. Yes. And the photo facial. I've done that as well. Yeah, I love lasers. You remember like ten years ago when we would do these crazy chemical peels instead of lasers? Could I be honest? I want to do a chemical peel. I did a. Wait, I did a VIP peel. Did you ever do a VIP peel? 
We ours was called um, TCA. Okay, but the really strong one. Anyway, um, I don't know. I just feel like I want a whole resurfacing like that. I know, I know, but I do. I want that again. I know. I have a couple of clients too because those really strong peels have kind of phased out. We've like moved more towards laser, right? And so I stopped doing T- the TCA peels yeah. on my client, but I still have a few clients that are like, we want the TCA peel. We want our face to peel like crazy. I'm like, no, go get the laser. Yeah. I know, but some people want it. They want that deep peel where your skin turns brown and then it comes off in chunks. Like to me, it's traumatizing, but some people love it and it does yield good results. It's just like a painful process, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's a, it's a longer recovery, but I feel like you get better results still than the laser, but that's just me. Yeah, but- right. Well, I'm glad to hear that from you because I've been getting lots of feedback on the TCA, like bring it back, bring it back. If that's what the people want, I mean... You know, you got to deliver. <laughs> you got to deliver. All right. What else? What else? We still have uh, four four minutes left. Wow. Uh, what else? Like, I don't know. I got to go pack. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't want to pack, but I'm going to do it. Tell I'm me about it. your tattoo. Tattoo? Do it. Tell me. Time clock. What is that? Oh, yes. This was a sermon that I heard about time being important to God. And basically just using your time wisely, which I have a little bit of a different perspective on it now because time, so to speak, isn't really the important. It's about doing things that matter, whether it's in your career, your purpose or your healing or with your family or it's not so much about make sure that you're keeping track of time and doing something important all the time. It's about um, focusing your energy on things that help you and others evolve and grow and heal. So, yeah. Oh my goodness, I love it. But is that t- two clocks? I can't see. But how many- uh, oh, what's that? Is a feather? Globe, okay. A globe and um, a quill and a hair <laughs> and <laughs> a clock. And what does it say? It says, will it matter? Will it last? Will it count? Oh my goodness. I never had a tattoo. I'm scared that's going to hurt. How- did it hurt? Yes, it does hurt. Did- was it in one sitting? No. I think it was probably four or five. Oh, my gosh. I know. I have so many tattoos, and they're, they do hurt. Oh, my gosh. I'm tired of getting tattoos because they hurt. I got this big one started on my back that goes all the way down my back and down my leg, and holy moly, painful. Ah. And, <laughs> and, there's, and, and now there's estheticians that are reversing that work with those microneedling and stuff too, right? Isn't that amazing? You can get the pigment out. Like if you want to take it off a tattoo, it's possible. I have a couple of tattoos that I'd like to have removed, honestly. But I've heard that hurts really bad. I know. Oh, my, it's not <laughs> worth it. Let's just use some cover-up. I don't know how they do it on the celebrities when they're in movies and stuff. But, yeah, cover it up. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, Toby, um, we have to go almost. But what about the energy healing? Reiki, what else? I, we, she's so sweet. She comes on. She's supposed to promote herself. And she never wants to talk about herself. It's, she's, we just, well, we, I love it. But you're just so sweet. I get so much more out of talking to you than, I mean, I work all the time and I, I'm in school and working. So it's just like so much work. And I love my job. Don't get me wrong. But I would just much rather talk to you and learn from you and, you know, connect with you. <laughs> Beautiful. You're so sweet. How can I follow you on Instagram? Tell us again. Okay. It's third eye underscore candy. That's mm-hmm. my Instagram. That's the best way to get a hold of me. You can find my link there. And yeah. You're so cute. And you're going where now? So you're leaving when? I'm leaving on Thursday. So I'll be gone Thursday through Thursday pretty much. Okay. Yeah, a week. And then, mm-hmm. um, so I guess we'll be back then. Are we back then after that? Because right, next week's Monday. Yeah, it's Labor Day. We're not here. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Good. I want to hear about your travels and vacation. And, um, I know. I can't wait. Oh, I can't, can't wait. wait. Enjoy. I hope everything goes well for you. And again, third eye underscore candy. Uh, She also does tarot readings. Again, she doesn't really want to talk about herself, but she's an awesome soul. And she can help you as a certified Reiki practitioner and so much more. Visit her there on the site and uh, enjoy your vacation. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You have a fantastic day and I'll see you in two weeks. Okay. All right. Bye, Bye, sweetheart. Thank you. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? 
Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.